Good morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the sixth Sunday after Trinity. We'll follow the order of worship that you find in your printed service folder. Uh, today's order of service is the common service, and our service will begin with our opening hymn. Hymn number 433. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended.
And now I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned, that you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort your heart by his holy absolution and strengthen you by his sacraments that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. To you, O Lord, I call my rock. Be not deaf to me, lest if you be silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help, when I lift my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him, my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts and with my song, I give thanks to him. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us all pray. O God of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, 
Graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson that's appointed for this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity, is written in Exodus chapter 20. We read there verses 1 through 17. It's written, God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image in the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbors. This is the word of the Lord. Our hymn of response.
The epistle lesson is written in Romans chapter 6, and we begin reading there with the third verse. It's written, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we should no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over Him. For the death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you are able, please rise and honor the gospel of our Lord Jesus. The Holy Gospel for the sixth Sunday after Trinity is written in the fifth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 20th verse. Glory be to you. These verses will also serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. It's written. And the Lord Jesus said, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the fire of hell. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, 
be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Praise be to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn 429, verses 1 through 4.
We pray. Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. And grant that your word of truth enter deeply into our minds and hearts. Turn us again from our sin to yourself, to your mercy and forgiveness, and your wonderful gift of life everlasting. To that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus sets before us today the example of the best and the brightest, the scribes and the Pharisees. But then he tells us, unless your righteousness surpasses even these, you will not enter. He says, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? Why not? But let's start, first of all, by recognizing that righteousness is a courtroom term, and it corresponds to a declaration of innocence, which in courtroom terms is acquittal. It is a verdict of not guilty. And so bearing in mind that there are a lot of incarcerated people who are saying, it's not my fault, I didn't do it. Bear in mind that what matters is not, is, 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 is who says it. The verdict of not guilty. On what basis is your acquittal? And recall that the Lord Jesus in, in Luke chapter 16 said to uh, those who opposed him, he said, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. St. Paul, on the other hand, speaks from faith, and he talks this way, and he says, I don't know of anything against me, but that doesn't make me innocent. It is God who justifies me. And that is what needs to be said and who needs to say it. It's got to be the verdict of innocent in the sight of God and pronounced by him. And the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 23, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, the best and the brightest. Hypocrites, he said. You clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. And this that the Lord Jesus says is so clear and so helpful that you couldn't say it better because the cup and the dish can be sparkly and clean on the outside. But it's the inside of it that you eat from. It's the inside of it that you drink from. And I'm humbled today to think back and remember the days when I used to work in the kitchen at a little restaurant called Dianco's Teapot Dome in Paw Paw, Michigan. And working at Dianco's, I remember there was one day that the boss came in and was furious pulled a cup out of the washing machine and showed it to us. Then stuck in that cup from out of the washing machine, there was still a dirty old napkin from before it went in there. I would love to be able to tell you that it wasn't me that did that. But to this day, I got to admit, I'm not sure. (laughs) You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the fire of hell. 
This, you see, we understand, we get it, that it might not be to our advantage to kill with our hands or with a knife or with a gun. So we might have to be content to kill in the heart, to kill with our eyes, to kill with our words. And this is how you see, if you take a killer, a murderer, and you give him a little bit of perspective and a little self-control, then what have you got? What you have is any one of us. And we need a higher standard than that. And we need to be held to a higher standard. To be quick Tempered, easily offended, slow to forgive, and to find excuses not to reconcile. That is the opposite of the heart of our Father in heaven, who is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. He is patient and merciful toward you. And there is, you see, in that light, There is a righteousness that will keep you out of jail here. But for that day and for that courtroom, for that standard of perfection and righteousness, we need something else, something more, something exceeding. And so says Jesus, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Now I've got to say, I couldn't have imagined the Lord Jesus asking us not to come. Or once we had shown up, for him to ask us to go. But you see, what he's doing is saving us from deceiving ourselves as we become mobsters, mobsters with threats and extortion and murder, but at the same time, we give generously to the church and generously to the clergy so that God will be happy with us. There's a reason why the Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken heart. But the thing about it is, in this whole situation with with righteous indignation, with being offended and taking offense, but, you say, but, but, there's always got to be a but, right? But. But can't we even be angry in this world which is so full of evil? Can't we even be frustrated with the world that we live in? Isn't there such a thing as righteous anger? And didn't the Lord Jesus himself get angry? Didn't Jesus make a whip and turn the tables? And didn't Jesus raise his voice? Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. And Jesus said, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. It's not that Jesus was never angry. He just didn't enjoy it. He of all people is the judge. He just didn't revel in it or live for it. For love does not delight in evil, and there is evil. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And this is what was said about him. Zeal for your house consumes me. And that's it. The better righteousness that even here, if we can see it, Jesus calls us to himself. Jesus invites us to put our trust in him, to believe in him, the righteous one whose righteousness exceeds 
and who credits that righteousness to you and to all who will believe. And let that, guys, inform what comes next. He says, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court. Lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put into prison. And yes, okay, so first of all, this does have an application among us and in our relationship to each other if I'm not ready to say that I'm sorry, not ready to ask forgiveness, or not ready yet to be reconciled. But more and greater than this even, we are coming to court and in the courtroom, everyone rises and the judge comes in and he is dressed in the robe of his office and he carries a gavel and he takes his place. And then will the accused please state your name. Go ahead. He will hear you. I am Aaron Hamilton. Satan means accuser. And he is a prosecuting attorney, and he is good at it. He uses God's law. And since it is God's law, God's own word that he brings against you, come to terms with your accuser finally means come to terms and make your peace with God on the way. And how will you do that? But the righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees is Jesus. Your Jesus, who has loved you even if you have not believed in him. Who has loved you and gave himself up for you. Who said, I did not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but but to fulfill them. And there are the terms right there. The terms by which you come to terms with your accuser. His forgiveness for all your sins and his gift of righteousness that he imputes to you through faith. And his absolution that you hear and receive and eat and drink and his goodness that he credits to you. He gives all of this to you for you to receive it through faith. So as we get now toward the end of our sermon, I would like to invite you along with me, the accused, please, as you are able, please rise. In the matter of the law of heaven versus the accused, to the charge of murder, the court finds the defendant not guilty by reason of the cross of Jesus. To the charge of irreconcilability, the court finds the defendant not guilty by reason of the perfect reconciliation that the Lord Jesus accomplished for our peace with God and with each other. And to the charge of bad religion and placating God, the court finds the defendant not guilty through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, in whom God is pleased and pleased with the world and pleased with you. And in his name we pray today, increase in us true religion. All the other charges in this case are summarily dismissed. And pursuant to the gospel, the accused is hereby granted citizenship in the kingdom of heaven and remanded to the permanent care and guardianship of God. Since that is true, 
Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we confess that we are poor sinners and that there is no good among us or in us, in our hearts, our flesh and blood being so corrupted by sin that we are never in this life without sinful lusts and evil desires. Therefore, we beseech you, dear Father, always abide with us with your forgiveness for these sins and let your Holy Spirit so cleanse our hearts that we desire and love your word Abide by it, live in it, and thus by your grace be forever saved through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In his name, most merciful Father, please hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for all who are sick or homebound or shut in. We ask your comfort, peace, help, and healing for them. In particular today, we pray for Daryl Sephoric. We pray also for Tony Walken for reconciliation with his family, and with you. We pray, most merciful God, that you would grant your help and your blessing to this, your congregation, which you have bought with a great price. Merciful God, by your word and spirit, be at work mightily in the hearts of those who are here. Strengthen and sustain and build up our faith and cause the bright light of your holy word to shine here and gather to yourself precious souls who will be saved. Build up and bless and help your church, O God. And grant, we pray, your blessing upon our land that your kingdom may come and be well served in a time of peace. Merciful Father in heaven, please hear us as we bring to you our private petitions. O God, be merciful to all of us in Christ Jesus, our, our Savior. Bless, build up your church here and in every place and cause your good and gracious will to be done. Thank you, merciful God, for this gift of prayer. Be with and bless and sustain and help us today and always. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, 
and with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ the Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. O Christ the
our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and precious blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Be filled with joy. Your sins are forgiven. Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. O oh, God the Father, fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we beseech you not to forsake your children, but always to rule in our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn 551, verses 2, 3, and 4.
Once again, everyone, good morning. So good to see all of you, and thank you for the chance to be together with you here this morning in God's house. 